All right, hello, this is, uh, this is the Helicopter Flying Handbook. We're in Aerodynamics of Flight. We're on uh, page 5 of 28 in Thrust. Thrust. Thrust is like lift. It is generated by the rotation of the main rotor system. In a helicopter, thrust can be forward, rearward, sideward, or vertical. The resultant lift in the thrust determines the direction of movement of the helicopter. The solidity ratio is the ratio of the total rotor blade area, which is the combined area of all the rotor main rotor blades to the total rotor disc area. This ratio provides a means to measure the potential for a rotor system to provide thrust and lift. The mathematical calculations needed to be calculated needed to calculate the solidity ratio for each helicopter may not be of importance to most pilots but what should be are the capabilities of the rotor system produce and maintain lift many helicopter accidents are caused from the rotor system being overloaded simply put pilots attempt maneuvers that require more lift than the rotor system can produce or more power than the helicopter's power plant can provide trying to land with a nose high attitude along with any other unfavorable conditions high gross weight or wind gusts is likely to end in disaster the tail rotor also produced produces thrust the amount of thrust is variable through the use of anti-torque patterns and is used to control the helicopter's yaw drag the force that resists the movement of a helicopter through the air and produced when lift is developed is called drag Drag must be overcome by the engine to turn the rotor. Drag always acts parallel to the relative wind. Total drag is composed of three types of drag. Profile, induced, and parasite. Profile drag. Profile drag develops from the frictional resistance of the blades passing through the air. It does not change significantly with the airfoil's angle of attack, but increases moderately when air speed increases. Profile drag is composed of form drag and skin friction. Form drag results from the turbulent weight caused by the separation of airflow from the surface of the structure. The amount of drag is related to both the size and shape of the structure that protrudes into the relative wind. It is easy to visualize the creation of form drag by examining the airflow around a flat plate. Streamlining decreases from, from drag by reducing the airflow separation. Skin friction is caused by surface roughness. Even though the surface appears smooth and it may be quite rough when viewed under a microscope, a thin layer of air clings to the rough surface and creates small eddies that contribute to drag. Induced drag. Induced drag is generated by the airflow circulation around the rotor blade as it creates lift. The high pressure in beneath the high pressure area beneath the blade joins the low pressure area above the blade at the trailing edge at the rotor tips. This causes a spiral or vortex which trails behind each blade whenever lift is being produced. These vortices deflect the airstream downward into the vicinity of the blade, creating an increase in downwash. Therefore, the blade operates in an average relative wind that is inclined downward and rearward near the blade. Because the lift produced by the blade is perpendicular to the relative wind, the lift is inclined aft by the same amount. The component of lift that is acting in a railroad direction is induced drag. As the air pressure differential increases with an increase in angle of attack, stronger vortices form and induced drag increases. Since the blade's angle of attack is usually lower at higher, at higher air speeds a higher and higher at low air speeds, induced drag decreases as air speed increases increases as air speed decreases. Induced drag is the major cause of drag at low, lower air speeds. Parasite drag. Parasite drag is present at present anytime the helicopter is moving through the air. This type of drag increases with air speed. Non-lifting components of the helicopter, such as the cabin, the rotor mast, tail, landing gear, contribute to parasite drag. Any loss of momentum by the airstream due to such things as opening for engine cooling creates additional parasite drag. Because of its rapid increase with increasing air speed, parasite drag is a major cause of drag at higher air speeds. Parasite drag varies with the, s with the square of the velocity. Therefore, doubling the air speed increases the parasite drag four times. Total drag. Total drag for a helicopter is the sum of all three drag forces. As air speed increases, parasite drag increases, while induced drag decreases. 
Profile drag remains relatively constant throughout the, sp throughout the speed range with some increase at higher air speeds. Combining all drag forces results in a total drag curve. The low point of the total drag curve shows the air speed at which drag is minimized. This is the point where the lift to drag ratio is greatest and is referred to as the, the lift to drag max. L slash D max. At this speed, the total lift capacity of the helicopter, when compared to the total drag of the helicopter, is most favorable. This is an important factor in the helicopter performance. Alright, we'll hold off there. So we just went uh, thrust and drag, the drag profiles. Alright, so now we'll be on uh, page 6 of 28 would be the next one, will be airfoil. Alright, see ya.